This small carnivorous dinosaur has sadly met the end of its days, but in 120 million years, its exquisitely preserved skeleton will change the way we view dinosaurs forever. It's called Sinosauropteryx, and it is the first feathered dinosaur to ever be discovered. But why did it take us until 1996 to find this guy? Unlike bones, feathers are much more likely to degrade or scatter due to the fact that they detach themselves during decomposition. The bones have to be in the perfect conditions to preserve them, for example an environment with low oxygen content that slows down bacterial decomposition, or because the fossils are surrounded by ice, tar, amber, or other substances that prevent degradation. Ever since the dinosaur renaissance in the 1970s, we've known that dinosaurs and birds were very closely related and that birds are in fact living dinosaurs. But only in the last few years has the discovery of fossilized feathers allowed us to dig deeper into the lives of prehistoric animals than ever before. Join me as we unearth the story of feathers. Feathers are filament-like projections that first evolved from scales. They come in a variety of colors and forms but are all composed of the protein beta-carotene. In all feathers, the calamus extends into a central rattress, which branches into barbs. The simplest feather type is the bristle. It has a stiff rattress and only a few barbs at the base. Filiplumes are short hair-like structures that also have a few barbs. They have a sensory function, adjusting the position of flight feathers in response to air pressure. Down feathers have a very loose branching structure that make them fluffy. They have a very short central rattress and have flexible barbs and barbules that trap heat. Semi-plume feathers provide form, insulation, aerodynamics, and courtship displays. They are also loose. Contour feathers are the most common. They give birds their smooth, streamlined appearance. They protect the bird from the sun, wind, water, and injury. The last and most complex feathers are flight feathers, found on the wings and tails of birds that fly. These are characterized by veins, which are made up of an interlocking microstructure where the barbs branch into barbules that have small hooks that interlock with the nearby barbules. This structure makes them stiff and flat with aerodynamic properties. Feathers have various uses. They allow birds to take to the skies, to display to others of their kind, for camouflage, insulation, to deal with water, and much more. And a major discovery back in 2010 allowed paleontologists to better understand how dinosaurs used their feathers. They found melanosomes, or microscopic structures that contain pigment in different skin coverings, including feathers. Size and shape of the melanosomes determine the feathers' colors. It turns out that Sinusauropteryx had reddish-brown feathers on its body, and its unusually long tail alternated between dark and light bangs. Paleontologists think it used its tail for display, intimidating rivals and predators and attracting mates. Its small fluffy proto-feathers suggest the need for insulation. Scientists found out the colors of many other feathered dinosaurs as well, like Cetacosaurus, whose countershaded brownish body may have helped it camouflage in its forest home. Feathers start off as placodes, thick patches of skin which will grow into an elongated tube. Just like hair, feathers develop in a specialized region of the skin called a follicle. A new feather will start off as an artery and a vein that extend through the central shaft and will supply the feather with building materials. A feather in this stage is called a blood feather. A waxy keratin sheet that protects it will recede over time. Filaments called barbs extend from the central rachis and may form veins. But how did feathers evolve into the amazing biological structures in modern birds today? We know that dinosaurs and birds evolved from reptiles and that feathers are actually scales, just a highly diverged type. It is heavily hypothesized that feathers, scales, and even pterosaur pygnofibers all evolved from the same common skin covering. Keratin is a protein responsible for the development of all skin coverings. Feather keratin is present during early stages of the development of American alligator scales. Both feathers and scales develop with the use of placodes. These prove not only the extreme closeness between dinosaurs and archosaurs, but also that feathers are ancestral not only to dinosaurs, but even further back in archosaurs. They also further prove that feathers and scales evolved from a common reptilian ancestor. By examining the fossil record, scientists have determined that early, more distant relatives of birds had straight feathers that looked like wires. Then, these wires split apart, producing simple branches. In many dinosaur lineages, these feathers evolved into more intricate ones, including some that we see in living birds today. Many dinosaurs had long aerodynamic flight feathers on their limbs, 
but their bodies were too large and their arms too small for powered flight. These large dinosaurs used their flight feathers for other purposes, like display. However, on the other hand, smaller dinosaurs could have ran up tree trunks, using their feathers as proto-wings to generate thrust and traction to be able to escape predators or hunt in the trees. Over time, these animals would have developed longer arms to give them the ability to glide short distances amongst the trees. The famous four-winged Microraptor is one dinosaur that is thought to have done this. Eventually, as in birds in the modern era, the ability to perform powered flight was obtained. Since 1996, we have uncovered about 50 different dinosaurs with direct evidence of feathers, most of them coming from the Liaoning province in China. To fully understand exactly which dinosaurs did or didn't have feathers, one must know dinosaur classification. Dinosaurs are split into two main groups based on the shape of their bones, the Sauruscians and the Ornithischians. Sauruscians then split into two more groups, theropods and sauropods. All confirmed carnivorous dinosaurs are theropods, and all living birds today are also considered theropods. The huge long-necked herbivores known as sauropods are the next closest relatives of birds. Ornithischians consisted of stegosaurs, ankylosaurs, heterodontosaurs, marginocephalia, and ornithopods. The vast majority of feathered non-avian dinosaurs were theropods, and it was thought that they were the only dinosaur group that possessed them until the discoveries of Tianyulong and Cetacosaurus. However, the feathers from each side of Dinosauria were of different shapes and sizes, leading paleontologists to believe they evolved independently from each other. That was until the discovery of a small early Ornithischian dinosaur called Kulindodromius in 2014. This dinosaur had multiple variations of feathers, some resembling those of modern birds and theropod dinosaurs. This suggests that all branches of dinosaurs evolved from a common ancestor that had feathers. And with this theory comes the possibility that all dinosaurs were feathered. This assumption is accurate, but until further research is done, it cannot be confirmed, especially with the fact that this entire classification system may be inaccurate. Paleontologists have used it for over 120 years, but studies in March 2017 suggest that the family tree may have looked less like this and more like this. However, this too cannot be confirmed yet, and that is the thing with paleontology. Fossils are all we have left of the creatures that lived before us, and so our understanding of ancient life is always changing. There is still so much more we don't know about the origin of feathers and their relationship with the dinosaurs, but every day, Paleontology moves one step closer to our understanding of a true 100% accurate prehistoric animal. These last few decades, this new dinosaur revolution has so far provided us with some of the most terrifying, bizarre, and beautiful fossils of all time. And fossilized feathers and dinosaurs have surely widened our limited imagination of the prehistoric world.